Well, hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Power of Your Mind podcast. You are listening to episode number 195. I'm Victoria Gallagher, the Law of Attraction hypnotist and number one bestselling author of Practical Law of Attraction, Align Yourself with the Manifesting Conditions and Successfully Attract Your Desires. And I'm also the founder of HipTalk.com and HypnoCloud apps, which gives you access to over 500 hypnosis recordings right in the palm of your hand. So be sure to download that app from the app stores today. And today I have a very special guest with me, Fabian Fredrickson. And for the past 20 plus year, Fabian has been and continues to be a powerful mentor to tens of thousands of women business owners. She is the founder of boldheart.com and the leveraged business program, which is based on close to 15 years of generating multiple seven figures annually with small children at home. And while she takes 14 to 16 weeks of unplugged vacation each calendar year, most importantly, the program covers the techniques and the mindset that she teaches and the community of women she provides that helps her members earn tens of millions of dollars collectively each year while they continue to scale and grow their business as well as their time off. Her most recent book is The Leveraged Business, How You Can Go from Overwhelmed at Six Figures to Seven Figures and Get Your Life Back. And it's the new definitive roadmap on how she's done it with heart and how you can do it too without sacrificing your life. And it's already become the refreshing new step-by-step -step formula for business owners who want to scale their business to a million, increase their personal income, stop working weekends and evenings, and actually enjoy their vacations without bringing a laptop. And she can be found at boldheart.com. And so today, Fabian is going to be sharing some of her insights on how to get out of your own way powerful mindset shifts that produce immediate results. So welcome to the show, Fabian. I'm so happy to be with you, Victoria. And thanks everybody for tuning in. Yes. I'm so happy you're here. I've been just following you forever. And um, so I was really delighted when I saw your name come up as uh, one of the guests to be on my show. So thank you so much for sharing your time and your wisdom and your expertise with us. I think this is going to be amazing. I love some of these uh, key words that I mentioned here about <laughs> going on vacation, uh, 14 to 16 weeks out of the year. That's definitely on my bucket list to get to, uh, not bringing your laptop. I mean, I can't even imagine that, <laughs> uh, there's always, always seems to be, you know, some kind of work going on in the back of our minds mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and really being able to scale from that six to seven figures. I think a lot of people that are listening to this show, this show are going to be like tuned in to how to do that. So, um, thank you so much for being here. And I just want to learn a little bit about your background and like what sure. got you in involved in helping women business owners in the first place. I, I never intended to. <laughs> 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 it all started um, more than 20 years ago. I was in corporate selling ad space clocking in and clocking out of a soul sucking job where I was just thinking this, I cannot do this for the rest of my life. I am not tapped into my divine purpose. I am unfulfilled. Uh, I hated having somebody breathe down my neck mm. and I was taking nutrition classes, uh, holistic nutrition classes. And I took the leap of faith uh, quit my job, opened up my, uh, my nutrition practice and only got like four clients. <laughs> it was, and those were friends really. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and not making enough money floating life and business on credit cards. Credit card companies are calling. I know I can't go back to corporate because that would be like a slow death. And, um, and I had to figure out what to do. And I called my dad in the middle of the night. Um, and I, I just told him and he said, Fabian, figure out how to get clients. And it was obvious yeah. But, uh, yeah, because <laughs> I had no choice. Um, and as you know, because you were following me uh, at that point, I, I ended up, I'm just fast tracking uh, here. I ended up creating the client attraction system for myself. And then other people started to ask. I stopped doing the nutrition. I had filled my practice to full capacity in eight months using the principles that I had put together for myself. And other people started asking for it. Uh, I became a business coach and fast track to uh, a, a few years later, I was at six figures uh, and completely overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working evenings, uh, weekends. Uh, I would put the kids to bed and then go right back to my computer ignoring my husband mm -hmm. not so great uh how did that and, work out <laughs> yeah well that actually takes us to a conversation uh that we had where normally I would celebrate I would call him and I'd be like honey it was a joke that we had honey I'm bringing home the tofu uh every time I got a new client and one day mm -hmm. he said to me and he's always been supportive Victoria always 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 and one day there was just silence on the line. I was like, honey, I got a new client. Mm -hmm. And he said, do we need more clients? Oh. We never see you. Oh, that's, and it that's, was, oh, that's so sad. Yeah. So sad. But this is so, so much more common than you realize. Mm -hmm. The one more email and mommy will be right there is a daily thing. One more email and daddy will be right there is a daily thing uh, uh, in entrepreneurs. And here's, here's the, the thing is like, there's a part of you that knows that you, you're made for more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other part is I can't grow. I mean, like, there's no time now. There's no more of me now. I'm, I'm not paying myself enough for these hours that I work. I'm stretched too thin. Uh, I, I can't, I can't see myself growing to the next yeah, level. Yeah. Uh, whether that's 250 a year, 500,000 a year or a million, it just seems too much. And here's what I discovered for myself. Um, I, I have just to fast track. I have been at multiple seven figures for 13 years now. Nice. And, nice. and I have a beautiful marriage. I'm not bragging. I, I assure you, <laughs> I'm sharing <laughs> that it's possible. I have three kids. I did this all when they were small. And, and um, what I've learned is what gets you to six figures won't get you to seven figures. So what people do, yeah. So what people do is they get to six figures and, the, and they think that the doing it all themselves and the, the mindset, and, you know, of course you, 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 you teach this, your beliefs, your mindset, all of that, the mindset that gets you to six figures will not take you to seven figures. The methodologies, the, how much you work won't, you need a new image, a new identity, new beliefs. And you need to work less. Mm, that is so beautiful. And that, you know, and, and here's the thing, it's, it's the truth. Um, because I mean, didn't most people go into being an entrepreneur because they wanted more freedom yes, <laughs> to take, 100%. Control, <laughs> take control over freedom, their life? Freedom, control, impact. Exactly. And when you get to that six figure point, um, and you're just, you know, it's like, well, let me, let me see if I can work more, you know, quickly, <laughs> let me see if I can work longer. Let me see if I can 
you know, figure out, you know, and, and you're just on this hamster wheel trying to go faster and faster and faster. You can't. You can't. <laughs> and it doesn't work. Because here's Think about it. Right. So you're at six figures and that usually, if you're at the beginning of six figures, it's 8k a month consistently, mm -hmm. or you're at 10k a month or even 15k a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. To get to seven figures. And I get, I get that people listening to this are not even thinking about seven figures. Most people don't actually attempt to get to seven figures, the majority of them, the our gals and, and a, a few great men, um, our gals are acci accidental uh, million dollar earners in the sense that when they uh, joined our program, for example, they're thinking, let me just get to multiple six. They're just like a mom. They single mom, not single mom, the, the, the gal that you're standing online at the, the grocery store with. And then she applies this stuff that I'm happy to share today. And this, all, all the steps that are in the book that you mentioned. And then she finds herself like, oh my God, I just crossed the million dollar mark. Ooh, ooh that gives me chills. <laughs> the emotion, the me, you're not me. How, how is this possible? So you're saying they didn't even intend to cross the million dollar mark. They not just originally, uh, mm -hmm. not originally because the mindset at first is I, I, I can't see myself get there. Cause even right now from where I am overwhelmed at six figures, I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I can't see how to get out of overworking. So for them with the mindset that they come in with, they, they think 10 X, the number 10 X, the money requires 10 X, the work 10 X, the clients require 10 X, the work. And I'm already stretched thin. And so it requires a new identity, new beliefs, uh, leveraging, and I'm happy to go through all of it, leveraging your team systems, your time, your business model, everything. What I want to share with you is the, it is easier to make a million in your business than to make 50,000 a year, than to make a hundred thousand a year. Oh, I'd love to hear your, <laughs> your ideas on that because that, I mean, and you say that with absolute you know, certainty, yes. conviction, belief, like it's, it's, I real. live it. I live it. I, I work except for four times a year where I deliver our programs over a period of two days. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I work two, two to three hours a day. Again, oh. I'm, I'm not sharing this to be like, who is she or whatever. Literally I'm sharing this because I think that people need to hear it as a, as a mindset disruptor. Absolutely. The, oh my God. Two to three hours a day. You guys hear this <laughs> two to three and some hours days, a day. And some days it's, it's an hour and a half. And mm -hmm. it's like, like, uh, this is me communicating with you, sharing this, this part of that. And the way you do that is to leverage your business. Okay, so the mindset of everything's going to depend on me. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one who can deliver the work. I'm the only one who can market, who can sell, who can lead the team. They need me. They won't pay if it's not with me. They won't pay for that if I charge more. They won't, they won't, they won't. All of that mm -hmm. is uh, two things. The first is wealth consciousness that is misaligned. So wealth consciousness states that you are deserving, you are worthy of all of the abundance that is available in the universe. It's true. It's true intellectually. Yeah. So we need to do the, the, the work, right? And you know, because you help people do the work. 
right? Absolutely. Yeah. You can walk around saying I'm abundant, I'm deserving, I'm worthy yeah. all day long. And yeah. it's not going to penetrate into the heart subconscious mind where it really needs to sit and right. be integrated. Right. Because identity drives behavior. Okay. The conscious mind is willpower, mm -hmm. which accounts for about 5% of action and behavior. The 95% is subconscious. It is our um, neural pathways. It's our beliefs. It's our self-image. It's our identity. It is um, how we show up in the world. So what I've realized is in all these years and coaching tens of thousands of women and seeing them up at the mic for, you know, and all of that um, is that their wealth consciousness is based on their beliefs. And I can give a woman here, this is the exact formula to mm -hmm. a leveraged business. Mm -hmm. But uh, if she doesn't work on her mindset first, she will not apply. So in your book, um, that's the strategy part, but it's not going into the mindset part. Is that it's a whole word? book on mindset? It's the whole book on mindset. Okay. Uh, okay. I teach, uh, at Bolt Heart. What we do is we do a mindset first methodology. Oh, that there's is amazing. all this strategy in here too. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. All this strategy, but we lead with the mindset. Because if I give a woman the entire plan, or I say, let's go for 10 times the number of clients, or even double the number of clients, she'll block it. She won't take action. So my job, along with teaching the strategy, is to uh, shift her mindset on a daily basis. The, we're not, we're not... Some people will call us a coaching program. We're not a coaching program. We're an in, uh, implementation incubator. Mm, yeah. In the sense that you can read online what to do. You can read it in books. Y you can map out your plan, but you won't implement unless you shift your mindset and unless you are witnessed. Mm -hmm. Because transformation only happens, deep transformation only happens when we are witnessed and ideally by more than one person. So when someone is in isolation, she won't make the shifts. She'll make a, up to a certain level of shifts, but it's deeper when she is witnessed by other hundreds of other women who believe in her more fiercely than she's ever been believed in by anyone. This is one of the secrets to multiplying faster. That, that is a mind shift right there. Like just hearing that, um, and knowing that like, yeah, you know, th because so many people are in isolation, uh, and we're, and trying to do this on their own. And so, um, it, it really makes a lot of sense that mm -hmm. when you've got kind of like that, uh, you know, that accountability, not just on one level, but by multiple people, um, witness, I, I haven't heard it put in those terms witnessed, but it's like that accountability, yeah. um, to, you know, that other, it's people not just accountability. Are... It's it, if I, I'll, I want to put, I want to, uh, layer some more distinctions on top of what you're saying, which is correct, okay. but there's subtleties that go a little bit deeper. So accountability, we provide daily accountability. Okay. And everything that we do, and it's, it's massively important. Um, you know, did you do what you said you were going to do? And we have all these systems and, and all of that jazz. On top of that, there's this accountability when you've got, there's, this can go in two different directions. The first one is you've got toxic people in your life who get you every time something doesn't go right, they'll say, why don't you get a real job? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And they are the people who you've heard the crabs in the bucket analogy where like, there's a crab that will start climbing out of the bucket and all the other crabs will bring the crab back down. That's yeah. what our society is set up. They don't want the outliers. 
because it'll make them feel inadequate about their own lives. So many of us unknowingly are surrounded by crabs will bring us down. I don't want to call us crabs, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So what for every crab that will bring you back down to the bottom of the bucket, you need at least five super friends. Mm. At least five people who will say, yes, you can. Now and five super friends, like, I mean, I don't know. So, so, some people don't even have five, like normal friends. friends. <laughs> yeah. So, so here's the thing. We live in a society that doesn't actually embrace entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. If you think, I don't know about you, but when I was, uh, when I was in school, I, I wasn't a good student. I didn't do, I didn't get good grades. I never fi finished college. Uh, I, I, I quit. I, it wasn't for me because they, the, the way the school system works is it's creating workers, assembly line workers. I'm not an assembly line worker. You're not an assembly line worker. We who are, who are entrepreneurs, the word entreprendre, I'm French, mm -hmm. the word entreprendre means to initiate. Mm, yes. Okay. And we are initiators, we're high idea generators, we, we are risk takers, but we're also not wired to finish. Interesting. And because of that, we get humiliated or ridiculed by society, things like that. You may not notice it, but if you go back and look at many experiences in your life, you were formed, we were all formed to fit into a particular thing and and those who finish are rewarded now we're not naturally wired to finish so we need accountability structure for our nature this is what i've learned about all of us so accountability measures but the accountability of being seen by others and when you've got hundreds of people believing in you and saying you've got this i'm going to call you today i i, I know you can get that I know you can raise your rates. I know you can step up on that stage. I know you can finish that book. And, and you've got these people who believe in you, who cheer for you. I know how cheesy that can sound, who encourage you all day. You have access to them 24 seven. They become your friends who get you more than everybody else in your life. You step up into the next version of who you're supposed to be on this planet. Because when you've got hundreds of people believing in you, believing in you, you're not going to want to let them down. Conversely, isolation breeds self-doubt. We understand the law of diminishing intent. It takes two days. You have this brilliant idea for the next thing you're going to do in your business. <laughs> when you're left to your own devices, you'll talk yourself out of it in two days. I, I when can, you have other people. I can vouch for that. <laughs> for we sure. all can. Yeah. We all can. Okay. I'm with you on there. It, all of us are wired the same. So when we understand this, and when we have the wealth consciousness of understanding that all the abundance of the world is available to me, and I am worthy of it, and I, I, I know how to get it, there, there, everything shifts. Mindset first methodology, wealth consciousness, Strategy, yes. Structure for your nature, yes. Accountability on a daily basis, yes. All of this propels you quickly to the next level of what you're here to do on this planet. More impact, um, more scaling, uh, and more income and downtime. I mean, everything that you're saying, it just, it sounds like a dream, you know, it really sounds amazing. And, um, so what would, what do you, you know, what, what do you say is like the biggest, um, thing that gets in our way of, of having that mindset of, you know, having that 
that thriving, uh, that thriving business. I mean, like what, what would you say is like the, I don't know, like the number one mindset that just keeps us on this never ending cycle of working harder and, you know, really not stepping into your full power, your full greatness. I think it's one thing that shows up in many different ways and it's, um, believing. Okay. And I'll explain what that means. Mm -hmm. You and I were probably not raised by, uh, a, a mother who made multiple seven figures with her, a, a life of freedom or sure. parents, right? Father, mother, whatever. So it's not in our consciousness. So we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what it looks like. We don't know what it sounds like. We don't know what it acts like. So we are all missing that example. When you don't have the example, it doesn't feel believable. You don't expect it. Law of attraction, metaphysics, the quantum field, all of that states that if you expect it, if you believe that it's there, it will be yours. I'll give you an example. I don't know if it's a great example, but I'll give it to you anyway, because that's the little download I got. So this morning, you expected the water in your toilet to flush. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you expected that when you put the hose, you know, the, the whatever it's called, so you could brush your teeth, the water would come out. And mm -hmm. you expected that when you turn on the water of the shower, the water would be there. That is part of your self-image. That is part of your new, your, this is your normal. There are other people I've built with my team, 26 schools in Kenya. I went to Kenya with my daughter. I carried water in oil drums, brown water that they would cook with, eat with, wash themselves with. They don't have the same, not everywhere. Okay, I have to be very careful how I say this, but not everybody there has the expectation that that clean running water is gonna is, is even available. You walk down a mile to get the water, you carry it up the hill a mile. I share this as one thing that when you get the example, when you have somebody who shows you what to do and you're surrounded by other people who have done it, right? what to do, how to think, how, like what beliefs you can have, how to approach the way to have a seven figure business. Even if you just want like 500,000 a year with the 14 weeks of vacation, there are certain ways of showing up. There are certain ways of marketing. You can't market the same way. You can't sell the same way. You can't position yourself in the marketing, in the marketplace in the same way. Everything needs to be leveraged. You need a different team than the team you have now. You need to use your time differently than the way you use it now. You need to um, see your business not as an individual uh, led business, but a process driven company. There are many things that need to shift. So the believing requires an example that you say, if she can do it, I can do it. I just need to know what she's doing. It's the, it's the example of being, if other people have done it, then you're going to believe that you can. It all comes down to belief, which you are an expert at. Absolutely. It's now, just next level. Yeah. Yes. Now in your, um, in your methodology and your teachings, um, say you have a little bit more of an obscure business, like, because, you know, like maybe not everybody, um, on this podcast that's listening, you know, wants to necessarily be a coach with a full, you know, book of clients, you know, maybe they, they have, uh, maybe their sites are set a little bit more on speaking or products or, um, you know, things of that nature. I mean, can your methodology, um, even if like, you don't necessarily have a good role model necessarily that, uh, you know, like what if you're a pioneer in your business? Like what if you're a total pioneer? So what I want to say is this, everything I'm sharing with you and everything that's in the leveraged business applies to every industry. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So at the end of every chapter, there is 
the, the story of a, a different person who was able to take this and get to a million. You've got people who are HR consultants, you have people who are architects, you have people who are, um, uh, I don't even know how to say this. They, they help surgeons, like dental, maxillo, facial surgeons, you know, it, it applies doula. We just had a doula uh, got, get to a million. We, uh, this year, uh, Nell, uh, who is a videographer for ballet performances, she got to a million. Uh, it doesn't matter the industry. It's about knowing that it can happen and then relaxing into, okay, I will learn how. I will be surrounded by people who are going on the journey. I will commit myself to this process. It's, it's, a, it's a two to five year process. Most people about three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a very long time. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Now, um, the next question I have, um, cause at the, at the beginning, you know, you talk about, um, you know, really surrounding yourself with a, with a great team and, you know, I mean, obviously you're not going to get there, um, by yourself, you know, no such we thing all as think self-made millionaire, <laughs> right. We all think we can, you know, um, and, you know, and, and here's, here's one thing I fall into. And I, I just wonder if, uh, your, um, students or our audience kind of falls into this, you know, where, you know, you do step out there to recruit and, and build a team around you, but they let you down and, you know, like they say that they can do this, but they really can't. Um, and then that builds up its own little belief system that like, you know, puts you back into like, you know what, I guess I'm just going to have to do everything myself. So how do you bust out of that? <laughs> <laughs> like, is that something that you've heard and experienced? I, a lot I write of people about it in the first chapter of the book. <laughs> I write everything. Okay. I wrote everything. So we're not alone here. <laughs> You're not alone. This is normal, but it doesn't have to be this way. Okay. Just really want you to get that. Virtually everybody goes through that. Here's why you are never taught how to hire. Oh my God. Yes, it's true. That's true. <laughs> Never taught how to hire strategically. You don't know what four categories to look for. I'll tell you what they are now. They're described further in the first chapter of the book called leverage your team. Okay. Uh, skills, experience, wiring, culture fit. Mm. What we, because I was there with you, what we did is either anybody with a pulse <laughs> <laughs> that I like, let me put her or him in that position. Mm -hmm. Or like, I like you. Yeah. Or my friend or my neighbor or just somebody. So not only do we not hire strategically because we've never been taught, nothing's wrong with you. You were just never taught how to. When you <laughs> learn for example, I've got a bold heart hiring process, but when you have a hiring process that ensures that you bring on rock stars, things don't fall through the cracks. And I'll explain what a rock star is. Somebody who has the skill set, the experience, but even those aren't absolutely necessary. What's necessary is the wiring, assessments, the right person who the divine created for that type of position and the culture fit if they can be an extension of your brand no matter what like if we have a thing at bold heart which is wwfd what would fabienne do right Ooh. and that person needs to carry that into the work into the world okay um you were never taught how to delegate so that you get it on time looking exactly what, it, what you want it to look like, uh, all of that. What most people do is they, I write about this in, um, in the first chapter uh, as well. Uh, it, they, this is a key, but it, they, they throw the thing to somebody, <laughs> their team member and say, go. <laughs> and, and the team member catches the, let's say the hot potato. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do with this? 
you said, I want it yesterday, uh, ASAP. The person has many other things on their death, on their plate. They don't have a clue as how to do it, what it's supposed to look like, what will make you happy, what won't make you happy. They don't get guidance enough from you. Uh, and they, they start to panic. I, I used to be a secretary. I know what it's like to have no clue. Mm -hmm. Start to panic. They go down a rabbit hole. And then three, three weeks later, they come to you and they give you the thing. And you, you kind of like, what? <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> three weeks. I could have done it myself. Yes. So much faster. <laughs> I would have saved the money, saved the time, saved the frustration. Maybe I'm just not cut out for this. Maybe I'm not a manager. It's just easier if I just do it myself. This is what 100% of people go through. And that's not true. You just need to hire better and delegate well. Hire and better and delegate, delegate well. well. That's it. And you can learn this in a day. And it that, changes sounds, that sounds amazing. That sounds absolutely amazing. I mean, I think just that one point alone um, probably saved a few entrepreneurs right now. And I'll share another thing around this. Most people, because they don't believe they can get rock stars, mm -hmm. because they haven't worked on the mindset of deserving a rock star, they hire the wrong people, often because they cheap out. Mm -hmm. And you want to hire for where you're going, mm -hmm. not for where you are now. Oh, yeah. So that's, that does bring me to, so they cheap out. Um, but you know, how do you properly pay? Afford? The, your, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's also, that's also in the book. So, okay. okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So, but I'll explain it. I'll tell you now when you're hiring. So here's the thing you want to ask yourself, with the people that you have on your team now, if you're being super honest with yourself uh, and check into your um, emotional guidance system, your intuition, say scale of one to 10. 10, rock star. Like, oh my God, where did I find this person? How did I get so uh, lucky? One, full body no. 10, full body yes. Where is each team member? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is something you can do after our conversation, right? And then where did you stop and why? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where did you not accept a 10 in that position? This is all the mindset work that we do. I know this sounds crazy. We do the mindset work, the spiritual work, the law of attraction work, all of that. Because if you don't raise your standards around your team, you're going to have these people who are mediocre at best. Okay. So that's not what you asked me. So I'll park that there, but that's super important to so believe. That's, thank you. That's, that's a really, really great question. I think everybody should ask. Yeah. Check in. Mm -hmm. Where did I stop? Where did mm -hmm. I settle and why? Mm -hmm. So a lot, I just received a four page letter from one of our gals who um, is close to a million, uh, mm -hmm was close to a million this past year. She'll definitely get to a million this year. And right now she's living on a sailboat uh, uh, with, she, she left her narcissistic husband. <laughs> she's living on a <laughs> sailboat with our new love. And she's all of that, um, just applied the eight activators that are in the book. The reason I share that with you is at first she didn't believe that she deserved a rock star team, the business to run without her and to be making money without being the one to actually do all the work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, and she had that same question of when I hire them, one, uh, can I afford them mm -hmm. if I'm hiring for where I'm, I'm going? So the first thing is you don't have to hire everybody. If there are, people are not as expensive as you think they are. You can hire fractionally. But most importantly, the, the 
if you understand that most everybody will pay for themselves within three to four months Mm -hmm. using what I'm about to share with you, you can afford just about anybody. Ooh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that sounds like a good thing to know how to do. Mm -hmm. So one, um, you're very strategic about, of course, who you hire, they must be a rock star, must be wired a certain way. And then once they're on board, number one thing is they have to start paying for themselves. The way that you do that is twofold. One, they take stuff off your plate. And two, ideally what they do is focus on, on money generation, at least for the first three or four months. They take stuff off your plate, you go and, and you get more clients, you sell, you market, you bring more clients and you're not eating bonbons with all your newfound time. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is just for a period of three months. And then strategically, you get them to work on stuff that will bring in money. Combination of the two, if they're good, if you hired properly, they will pay for themselves and then some. And when you apply this tactic, this is the bold heart hiring way, right? All here. You could begin to surround yourself with people who are better at all the other things. You've got your unique brilliance. You've got your reason for being. You've got your divine imprint. There's one, you've got your your way of making money in the world. And then you surround yourself with other uniquely brilliant people in all of the areas where you're not uniquely brilliant. And then you create a uniquely brilliant team. You're a rock star. You, you, you focus on just the things that only you can do mm-hmm. truly because mm-hmm. it's your purpose. And then everybody else does too. It changes the business completely. That is beautiful. I, yeah. I mean, I, I really feel like that, that just shifts the whole perspective, you know, and you do need a, a whole, like you, like you originally said, you're not going to get from, uh, you know, six figures to seven figures, the same way that you got from zero to six figures. It's going to take a whole different shift in thinking about how you do things about how you work, how you work with other people, how you hire other people, how you, you know, ultimately think about your team and what they're there for and, um, and how you think about yourself and what you're here for. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of what comes, goes into the, uh, quotient and the equation is, um, you know, really owning your, uh, your, your, your gifts and that, you know, you're really put on this planet for a special, uh, purpose that is unique to you that nobody else can really do. And, um, so I, I, you know, you didn't mention that part, but, you know, I know that that's got to be part of your, it's in the the introduction of the book. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's no one, there's, there's never been anybody like you in 13.7 billion years. There's nobody like you now. There will never be anybody like you. You have a song to sing that only you can sing. Does your book uh, go into like the, the whole imposter syndrome and, and, you know, like, you know, how a lot, you know, so many women, you know, they just think, oh, you know, I'm, I don't know if I'm really good enough to do this, you know, (laughs) even if you've been doing it for many, many years, you know, it's like, there's, there's that, that sense that like, you know, people just get, it's for others. It's not for me, who me, absolutely. This goes with this, this goes back to this takes us full circle back to the original point, which was the self-image. Yeah. The reason you, you, you need a mindset first methodology is if you don't, if you are in comparitis with other people Mm -hmm. and it's for them, but not for me, even if you're not aware of that kind of thinking, if it's, if you're vibrationally, you, you don't feel that that is ever going to be yours, then you can't. Because th- wh- where people sabotage is because the inner beliefs don't match the subconscious beliefs 
and self-image doesn't match what they say they want. So they say all day long, I've seen this, believe me, uh, hundreds of women come up to the mic and say, I want to make a million dollars a year. But when you actually ask them what their beliefs are, it's incongruent. Rich people are sleazy, inauthentic thieves who take up too much space. You have to step on the backs of others to, you know, all this stuff. When you change your beliefs, when you change your image, how you see yourself in the theater of your mind, when you change your neural pathways, all of that very, very quickly on all the things that are preventing you from reaching that business goal, the, it's almost, uh, as Joseph Campbell says, it's where there was a, a no opening in the wall, now there is a door. It's as if the thing that you've wanted your whole life is now open to you and you can walk through the door. It's super powerful. It definitely sounds very powerful. And I mean, it is powerful, but your, your book, and everything that you're talking about here just sounds so um, amazing. So tell us a little bit about your um, your book and, and what people can do right now. Um, I just, I happen to notice you are uh, giving this book for free for like a $2.95 shipping, um, which yeah. is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about that and yeah and you can um i don't know the link that you have but if you have the link that'd be great i don't happen to know it by heart but i'm sure it's in the i show have notes. it and okay, just for, for our listeners here to hear it it is the leveraged business book dot com the yep. leveraged okay. business book dot com yep. and um, I literally just before we got on I went to make sure the, the link works and very easy just put in your name put in two dollar ninety five cent on your card and boom you're gonna get the book in the mail and it's free yeah. yeah and so if you had gone to Amazon you'd pay more but you would also not get a video series that goes with it where I actually go into a lot of the specifics um, there, if you get it through that link, the leveragedbusinessbook.com, you also get an assessment uh, that you can go through online. Uh, it just basically helps you look at, okay, you got the eight activators, which one should you start with? It's, it's customized, you get your report in a few minutes, and then it gives you also the, uh, the cheat sheet for the eight activators. So you can print it out, laminate it, keep it on your desk. And it's uh, sometimes having the entire system all on one sheet of paper is super helpful. So those are all the gifts. Listen, my, my intention is that for the right person who reads this, uh, I just want to give her as much information, him, her, as much information as possible. And then it's either a full body yes, like I need to learn from her, or not interested. So I'm going to just add as much value as possible. And then if it's a connection, it's a connection. And then I get to, I get to help somebody change their lives. That is amazing. And that's, that's a super powerful, uh, inspiring, amazing gift and for the right person. Um, and you know, for anybody really, uh, who, who reads this, I mean, it sounds like it, it can be a life-changing, uh, book to read and, you know, with, with openings for more and other steps that you can take, uh, to get to the next level. And so this has just been a really inspiring, um, time with you. I just really, um, enjoyed our conversation and, um, it's, you know, it's opened my eyes. I'm sure that it's opened up a lot of other people's eyes that are, that are listening to this, um, so, you know, beside going and getting a copy of this amazing book at the leveraged business um, do you want to leave our audience with any final tips or words of wisdom, um, just before we, you know, say goodbye, this has just been an amazing time. And I just really, really appreciate you, um, for everything that you're doing, uh, to help, uh, businesses help entrepreneurs. Um, you know, you and I, we both have a very soft spot for, you know, helping, uh, helping spiritual 
spiritually enlightened um, entrepreneurs yeah. uh, to to help the world because we are we're here, you know, to make a difference and make a difference in people's lives and all entrepreneurs and and we're just here to, uh, you know, make the world a better place. And so I just, I really want to thank you for your time. Um, but in any, uh, any final. I, I, if we all understand that we are here with a very special purpose and when we are, uh, presented with this, something else I have, uh, I have always believed that there is no coincidence. Uh, the divine puts in our path uh the the breadcrumb that we need next the next clue in our scavenger hunt um and when we get out of our own way and we say yes to the next right thing there is no more struggle it's as if as abraham talks about um abraham hicks it's as if when you when you follow the divine guidance or whatever shows up in front of you it's as if you lift the oars in the boat and instead of paddling upstream the boat corrects itself and glides. And that's how I live my life, just kind of surrender to the next right thing, understanding that everything is divinely put in front of us. Um, I don't know if that can be useful to anybody uh, listening, but that's how I live my life. And I think that's one of the reasons why I've been able to create and innovate in this way. Just I think that is divinely, divinely followed. I think that really resonates with our audience. And I think that, um, yeah, you know, when you just live from your heart and live from that divine guidance, you are led to that next step. You just have to walk with your eyes open and your heart open and be willing to trust and allow yourself to take that next step. And so- yeah beautifully said <laughs> yeah yeah definitely well thank you so much for being a guest on the power of your mind podcast it has been um an honor and a pleasure to speak with you for me too thank you victoria thank you everybody thank, thank you